Hey scholars, this video is to go over some of the empirical formula, molecular formula questions um, that several people missed. And the third question in that set described a hydrocarbon molecule with a molecular mass of 204 AMU that was 141.2 milligrams of carbon, 11.8 milligrams of hydrogen, and 47 milligrams of oxygen. Now, because those are all milligrams, they're all the same unit, you could simplify this in a similar way to what we did with the percentages. And you could just say that your sample is actually a thousand times larger. And you could just cancel out all of the milli prefixes. That would help you avoid some zeros later on in the question. Um, but you do not have to do that. You could certainly still do the conversion from the milligrams. One issue is that our molar masses are always in terms of grams. So one mole of carbon is always 12.01 grams of carbon. And this would not cancel out with the milligrams. So we would still need to convert from milligrams to grams by dividing by 1,000. So again, if you change to grams in the beginning, that can help you cut down on some of the small number of steps just by saying that your sample is larger than it really is. But because all of these are grams, that means that our moles are going to be actually be pretty small. So when we convert our grams of carbon, our grams of hydrogen, our grams of oxygen, or our masses of those rather to moles, we end up with these numbers. If you don't do the conversion in the beginning, or if you just keep it in milligrams and you're thinking in terms of millimoles here, then you actually get 11.75, 11.6832, and 2.9375. Now, what I think some people did is that this, they kind of messed up at this point and they actually rounded all of these. And of course, this is not the step where you would round, and this is also not close enough to round. And some people switched this, rounded this up to 12, some people rounded this up to 12 and rounded this up to three. Some people didn't round these up at all and they left it as 11 and 11, which definitely does not represent the rest of the number that's there. Remember, the next step, once you have moles of these elements, is to actually divide by the smallest number of moles. And when we look at all of these, we see that the smallest number of moles is the moles of oxygen, because again, that's 2.9, that's smaller than the 11.6. We also know this is smaller because it has two zeros after the decimal instead of just one. I think some people may have looked at this may have looked at it as 29 or 0 0.029 compared to 0 0.011. And of course, that's skipping one of those zeros. So they divided by the wrong number at this point. Whichever number you do divide by, when you divide by the smallest number, you should absolutely get nothing smaller than one. And if you divide by the wrong number here, this ends up being bigger. And one of these ends up being a smaller fraction, actually, a smaller decimal than if you divide by the 0 0.0029375. Another thing I want to point out at this point, I wrote up here at least four in a circle, and I meant at least four significant figures. So we have four significant figures in our mass of carbon. So in our moles, we want to keep at least four significant figures. We don't want to round too much here. Otherwise, we're going to lose information. Since we're only interested in this whole process in the ratio between these, it's okay if we keep extra places. We don't want to keep too many extra, but we do want to keep at least four, and it would be even better to keep one more place, if not two. I went ahead and kept um, two extra places for most of these. When we divide by the smallest number, of course, the oxygen, we're dividing by itself, so it comes out as one. The carbon comes out as just over four. The hydrogen comes out as just under four. 
Both of these are within a tenth of our integers, our closest integers. This is 0.1. So we're 0.1 away or less from four. So this rounds up to four, this rounds down to four. That makes our final empirical formula, C4H4O, that empirical formula, four carbons would have a weight or a mass of 48, four hydrogens would have a mass of four, one oxygen would be 16, so the total would be 68 AMU. If we take that 68 AMU and compare it to the 204 that we started with, then we find out that the molecular formula is three times bigger than the empirical formula. So everything in that empirical formula, we need to multiply by three. And then that gives us the final molecular formula for our compound. Notice that if we had rounded these in the beginning to 12, 12, and three, even though these were too far away, that would still have given us the formula here but that would have been the molecular formula and not the lowest ratio. So the first step here where we divide by the smallest, we're always looking for the uh, empirical formula first. And then we would use extra information if we had it to do the molecular formula. You do not necessarily have to have the atomic or the molar masses to do the molecular formulas with Question four, you should have found CH3 as the empirical formula for that. We could think about what we know for Lewis structures, and that carbon has four valence electrons, each hydrogen has one valence electron, and there are three hydrogens. So total, there would be seven valence electrons shown in our Lewis structure. Remember the dashed lines each represent two electrons and there would be a single unpaired electron there. That single unpaired electron is really a radical. Radicals are not stable, they're very reactive. Certainly you could add an electron to that carbon, but that would give it a negative charge. That negative charge would need something else positive to balance it out which would come back and affect our empirical formula. And so rather than putting an extra electron in there, if we think about what we know and we have an extra unit of CH3, which is also a radical, then those two unpaired electrons could each become shared between those two radicals and those two radicals could combine to make C2H6 or ethane. And so the molecular formula is actually twice the empirical formula in the case of question number four. There aren't gonna be a whole lot of compounds or questions where you could do this. This was just kind of meant as a review of the Lewis structures and a way of pointing out that you can use all of the information that you have available to you to figure out what a molecular formula might be.